Hello everyone and welcome to my studio. Today I want to teach you about how to paint this beautiful garden scene. This is one of my personal photos that I took at Filoli Gardens, which is an Italian garden in Northern California. It's in the town of Woodside, which is about an hour south um, of San Francisco. And what I especially love about this painting is the light and shadow. They're just phenomenal. Um, I went to this garden in the late afternoon and that's when I took this picture and it was also towards the end of summer and so the sun was kind of low in the sky and just it just created a gorgeous scene. So um, what's also great about this photo is you've got this one tall cypress tree that's very sculptural and then there are two more cypress trees in the distance so that gives us an opportunity to create depth because the tree in the foreground will be much darker and brighter in color and the ones in the distance will be smaller and grayer and lighter in value. Then there's um, the other cypress tree which is a different kind of cypress on the left that has a really twisted trunk and curvy branches and so the whole shape and movement of it is completely different from the Italian cypress. And then you've got this beautiful pot of flowers in the front um, that are pink and red and so you've got this great contrast of complementary colors bright pink and red flowers in the front green trees green grass and so on um, and then you've got these beautiful paper stones which are imperfect so you can see that some of them are sticking up in places and so even though they have sharp edges and it gives us an opportunity to put some straight lines in the painting um, it's nice because they're they're kind of imperfect looking and that's what's great about most Italian gardens is they're this beautiful combination of perfection and imperfection and that's why I love this this scene it's just very representational of an Italian garden this photo has a very um, well pretty high horizon line um, and the horizon line is at the end of the walkway and it's where that wall is at the end. The bottom of that wall is the horizon line. And this path that leads us to the horizon line um, is intersected by lots of beautiful shadows. And the shadows go across the, the path and then they go on to the grass. And so it's really nice because you've got this shadow shape which changes color and um, going in, you know, it's one color going across the pavement and it's another color going across the grass. And then in the foreground you have lots of dappled um, shadow patterns on the these pavers. So you've got squares and rectangles and then little round organic shapes of, of light sitting on top of those rectangles, which is just a really nice arrangement of lines, of shapes, and light and shadow. I wanted to point out that I shrunk this trunk here. Um, I didn't want to have a big section on the left of a real twisted gray brown mess here. And it's a beautiful, interesting trunk, but I didn't want it to be so dominant. Um, and so I did shrink it and you can, you can tell this is probably a third smaller than what's showing up in the picture. So the first thing I want to do is start painting some of the shapes in the background. So I'm going to start with turquoise green and yellow and more turquoise green that got to be a bit too yellow. And just a little more vermilion. There we are. So I decided with this painting that it would be best to paint it from back to front. So this is a, it's a bush in the photo and it doesn't pass behind this tree. There's some other um, branches and things on this side, but it's better for the painting to have this be a little more simplified shape. 
So I just simplified it and made it look like what this bush here looks like going all the way to the edge of the, of the page of the of paper. And I'm gonna mix ultramarine and magenta and titanium white. I just picked up way too much of that. And I'm gonna mix some of that with this green color. And I'm gonna put a shadow across this bush. Just like that. Now the trees behind um, this bush, if you look at the photo, the cypress tree is slightly warmer green than the trees behind. So I'm gonna go back to this mixture. I'm gonna add some more turquoise green and some more white. But when you add white to any of your colors, um, it lightens them and it also cools them. This is a cooling white. And I'm gonna add some Naples yellow also. I'm gonna paint this nice tree shape. Oh, it's still not light enough. I need more white and more Naples. I wanna make sure that it's definitely lighter than the cypress tree. I'm just gonna let it occupy this whole corner. So we're gonna be kind of, we're gonna be painting like a, a patchwork of different hues of green in the background. And we're gonna allow a little room for open sky, but not much. And there's also a little bit of mountain peeking through, but I'm just gonna make the trees, the foliage, the light and shadow, the grass and all of that. And that's gonna be enough to fill out this painting. Okay, so now I'm gonna add some Naples yellow. Now I'm gonna add some Naples yellow and a tiny bit of regular yellow and come across the other cypress on this side and put a green that's again, just a slightly different shade of green. So we're sort of using these grayed down greens to frame everything in the foreground. And having gray colors in the background will help the foreground look more colorful and vice versa. And I'll put a little of that color right here also. Now I'm gonna mix some more yellow with the same mixture. So we're just changing it slightly as we go through the painting. A little more. And I'm gonna put some of that color below the other color. So just kind of coming across here, just with, just with some beautiful shades of greenish gray. So whenever you gray any color, you mix it with whatever is the opposite of it. And if you're unsure of what the opposite color is, look at your color wheel and look opposite, look on the opposite side of whatever color you're considering and see what's there. So in this case, we grade our green down with a bit of vermilion. And vermilion is the opposite of green. It's a nice, beautiful red. Now I want to put in the sky. And so for the sky, I'm going to use ultramarine blue and titanium white. And I'm going to put that right up to the top and bring that color down.
right up to the top of the bushes and trees. And I'm gonna go across on this side. There's some blue sky that you can see through some of these tree branches. And it's nice to have some sky showing. It kind of gives the painting a, a little bit of breathing room. Visual breathing room. And also having this blue color will help um, when we put the shadow color down in the papers because this is going to be brighter and more luminous than that. And so they'll sort of enhance each other in hue. So there's our sky. Now I want to add um, a few branches and a few more um, spots of gray down green, just a few different colors to add some detail. And this is just detail added with color. So I'm mixing some more yellow and also some Naples yellow. And I'm gonna make smaller brush strokes. Just kind of going from left to right and making a few beautiful brushstroke shapes. I'm going to get my small brush and pick up some of this violet that I have mixed up. And I'm adding some vermilion to it. And I'm going to put in a few branches. Don't want to have too much detail back here, but I do want to have some. So the background is laid in now um, for the trees, and the next thing I want to do is paint the wall at the end of the at the end of the picture. It's a beautiful stone wall. So ultramarine, titanium white, and magenta. So we want to make a nice, beautiful, luminous violet gray. And I'm also going to add some vermilion, warm it up a little bit. And we're going to simplify what's back here. So we're going to paint this color right across here like this, just sort of like a, a long rectangle. And here also, and I know you're thinking she's painting just the shadow color, but I am going to come back in and put some highlights on the wall where it's in the sun. So I'm going to do the shadow color first, and then I'll come back in with some highlights for the sun. So there's our shadow color. Now for the highlights, I'm going to mix titanium white and Naples yellow. So titanium white and Naples yellow. And I'm just going to put a few spots of that here just to show that there's some sunlight coming down on this beautiful wall. Whenever you layer paint and gouache, you want to make sure that you don't have too much water. You want the paint to really sit on top of the other paint. So you need to have very little water on your brush. So I'm putting a highlight at the top to show the top of the wall. Now I want to paint these two cypress trees, the ones in the distance. So I'm going to mix a nice, warm, beautiful green. I'm going to mix 
yellow, and ultramarine. So I'm starting with the one on the right, and I'm gonna add some lemon yellow to this mixture now and make it a bit brighter. So the left side is the sunny side, and the right side is gonna be really dark. That's the shadow side. I'm gonna go over and paint this one the same color. Now I'm gonna pick up ultramarine blue, magenta, black intenso, and some yellow. And a little more ultramarine blue. I wanna make a nice deep dark green, but it's gotta be grayed down a little bit. And I'm putting that on the shadow side of each of these cypress trees. Now I'm going to take titanium white and mix it back in with the same green mixture. And I'm gonna put a little extra light right on this side. I wanna get that edge soft, where the, the edge of where the shadow is on the tree and the sun. I'm gonna just soften that edge by brushing right down into it with some of this nice light color. Because it's not a solid cylinder, it's foliage. And so it should have a textured soft edge. Plus, having that soft textured edge will help push it into the distance. Make it look like it's far back, which it is. And I'm just touching up the bottoms. So I'm using the same oval brush. I'm gonna mix lemon yellow and titanium white and a very small amount of turquoise green. So really, really bright, pretty color for this lawn. And I'm gonna add a very tiny amount of magenta And I'm going to go right up to the edge where the horizon is. I'm going to go on this side of the tree. Just filling in this nice, beautiful, sunny lawn shape. Now I'm gonna get Naples yellow and some more magenta. And I'm gonna brush over the back of it just to lighten it ever so slightly towards the horizon. So adding the Naples and the magenta, graze it down slightly and it helps push it into the distance. Now as we move forward, the grass coming forward, I'm adding more lemon and more turquoise green. So I'm putting the, sun, the sunny part in first and then I'll come across with the shadow colors. I want there to be some variety of green colors within the lawn whether it's in the sun or the shadow. And I want it to become greener and brighter the closer it comes to the foreground. That's what's gonna make visual sense for my painting. Visual sense meaning it's gonna, you know, create that look of light and shadow. Okay, 
So there's the green lawn in the sun. Now we're gonna make the green lawn shadow color. So I'm gonna start with turquoise green plus ultramarine plus magenta, a little more magenta, and I'm gonna get deep yellow. A little more deep yellow. And I'm gonna start painting the shadow shapes. So each one of these cypress trees is also casting a shadow. And the further back it, these shadows are, the thinner the shadow line. So coming, the shadow passes behind the tree. Isn't that a beautiful shape? So this goes all the way across. And there's a little ridge here along where the grass meets the cement. So I'm just kind of making a small dotted line. I'm also gonna emphasize the shadow where it's underneath the tree. So I've added black intenso just to where the shadow is right under the tree. And I'm gonna mix that with this other color that I mixed up here for this violet. And I'm gonna put a few um, dark marks just under there. I'm gonna make a small dotted line to show that there's some shadowing underneath this bush. And I'm gonna go back and soften that because it's so far in the distance, I don't want it to be like a, a hard, dark line. So I'm just softening it with a little more of this gray green. And I got a little bit of a mark here on my lawn from that dark color, so I'm just painting over that. If you get some other paint where you don't want it, gouache is great, you can just layer right over it. And for something like a landscape, it doesn't have to be the exact right color. Just adding a few more brush strokes of some different grays back here. There we are. So to mix the colors for the big tree in the foreground, I'm gonna use ultramarine blue, magenta, and deep yellow. And I'm gonna paint the shadow color first, and then I'm gonna paint the sunny color. I'm also going to add some vermilion because it's not quite warm enough. It needs to be a warm, dark green. And I added some more deep yellow. All right, so put nice, big, broad brush strokes in. Remember that um, even though you're painting a dark color, this is gouache, so you need to have plenty of pigment on your brush. Don't want to be skimpy with gouache paint. If you put it on and it's not dark enough, you can layer over it, but you can also get it dark enough the first time, then you don't need to do that. So 
Just filling in this nice deep shadow shape. I love the angles of the sunlight coming across this tree. Now at the bottom of the tree, where it comes down to this bush, parts of it look like it's sunny, but I'm gonna make it dark just to simplify this and to make the tree look a little more solid. And you can see on the sides of the cypress tree, just for texture, I'm adding a few small brush strokes just to indicate that it's not perfectly smooth, that it is a tree. And so I wanna paint those over what's in the background. So I'm going out beyond the shape of the tree into the background and just making a few nice brush strokes for the foliage. And I'm gonna do that on this side also. So this is, there's different ways to soften edges and soft edges will make things look three-dimensional. And one of the ways to soften an edge instead of blending is to do this. This is a broken edge or a textured edge. And that'll give you a soft edge and help make whatever it is that you're painting look more three-dimensional. Okay, I'm gonna rinse my brush. If you hear that jingling, that's my dog running by. <laughs> okay, so lemon yellow, turquoise green, and deep yellow more turquoise green, titanium white, a little more titanium white, and a little more deep yellow. Hmm, still need more turquoise green. I wanna make sure that the green that's in the sunlight on this tree is different than the green that's in the grass. So I want it to have more blue still has to be mixed with yellow, but I want it to have more blue tones because there's a lot of yellow in the grass. So I'm gonna pay attention to the angles where the sun is hitting this tree. And they're really nice angles, beautiful. So they, some of them come almost all the way over to the other side. So I wanna have big shapes of the sun and also a few small ones. So I'm making a few small brush strokes and that helps also with showing the texture of this beautiful tree. So a couple more here. There, so now we've got a nice tree with beautiful sunlight on it. I'm gonna add some yellow into some of the bigger shapes. And also right here, just to emphasize the warmth of the sun. So value creates dimension and edges and also some temperature shifts. So having it go from cool to warm to cool and from light to dark will help emphasize the, you know, the roundness of this beautiful tree. There. Now I'm gonna add some titanium white to the same color and a little more lemon yellow and make a couple brighter accents right in the center here.
Now we'll paint this little boxy bush here that's underneath that tree since we're mixing greens right now. So I'm going to make um, a nice dark with ultramarine blue, black intenso, deep yellow, and we're going to put that right here. So this dark green doesn't have as much blue in it as the dark in that tree. So we're painting in this dark shape here. And I'm going to come right down here at the bottom. So this is where the bottom of this bush um, meets the pavers. And I'm going to take some of that same dark green, while well, I already have it mixed up, and I'm going to put it over here around where these flowers will be. That'll um, create some nice value and color harmonies to have some of that dark that's the same color mixed in with the beautiful flowers. And I don't want the line where this bush meets the pavers to be too straight, so that's why I'm making it a little bit jagged at the bottom, sort of like their little leaves and things hanging over the side. Now we'll mix the color for where this bush is in the sun, so I'm going to go back and get deep yellow and mix it into my lighter green mixture here. And I want it to be even more yellow, so I'm adding some lemon. I use that combination a lot. I mix deep yellow and lemon yellow together. Just makes a really great variety of greens. You think you just use one or the other. Usually when I paint with oils, I just mix one or the other, either lemon or, or a deep yellow, like cadmium yellow deep or even cadmium yellow medium. I don't mix them together too often, but in gouache, I do it all the time. Now I'm mixing some titanium white. Just to lighten it a bit. I'm gonna put some nice sunshine in, in the side and a little more titanium white on the top just to really emphasize the light because remember this painting is about the beauty of light and shadow and the uniqueness of these different kinds of cypress trees. I always want to think about what the intent is what, what it is that you want to depict in your paintings. So now I want to put a little bit of sparkle into this dark green. So I'm going to go back and re-wet this dark and I'm going to add some yellow to it. And within the shadow shapes, I'm going to give it some texture. So do you see how the background frames the foreground? Well, this foreground is going to frame this beautiful pot of flowers. So we're setting it up to be a nice dark gray green, but because it's in the foreground, we want it to have more detail and texture. And that's why I'm going back in with this extra color. 
Got to have both things working for us. I'm also going to add some, um, some extra texture to the shadow side of this tree. So I'm going to mix Intenso and Ultramarine Blue. And I'm going to put a few nice dark marks like this just to give a little texture. So these are darker. I'm layering over the shadow and these are darker than what's in the shadow color by at least one value shade. And then I'm gonna come back into that with a little more blue and some titanium white. So something that's a little bit lighter and a little bit bluer. And again, it's the same concept because this is in the foreground. I want to make sure it has some texture. For these other two trees in the distance, they don't really need it. So while we're still mixing greens, I want to start mixing some of the greens for this other cypress tree on the left and also for some of the foliage here along the path. So we're gonna start with ultramarine blue and deep yellow. And I'm gonna paint right at the top here, right in between some of this beautiful blue sky. And this tree in the photo comes right over and passes in front of the other cypress tree. So it kind of gives the viewer a sense of standing under these two beautiful trees. So just going across the top here in between the spaces of blue sky Gonna add some more yellow and some vermilion. So more ultramarine. Need to mix up more of this color. Vermilion, deep yellow and cyan. So I'm just making kind of loose painterly brush strokes of this dark color. Now I'm going to get some black and I'm going to mix that in because if you look at the photo, the green is the darkest where it's in front of um, what's illuminated behind it. The bushes and things, that's the darkest at the bottom and a bit through the middle also. And when I paint trees, I typically paint the greenery first and the branches and trunks and things later. But I wanted to go through this painting and show you all the beautiful varieties of green that you can mix with these colors with your gouache paints. I'm going to rinse my brush and now I'm going to get some more lemon and a bit of titanium white and I want to make some lighter yellowy greens so this tree at the top also has some places where the sunlight is giving it a nice dappled green look. You want to make sure in a painting where you have strong light and shadow that in some places, not the whole thing, but in some places that you have the sunlight and the shadow be at least four value shades apart. So that's why I sometimes add a bit of black to my green to make it really dark, like maybe on a scale of one to 10, if 10 is black, I'd like to go down to a nine, eight and a half, something like that. 
And then in some places where the light, if, the, if white is a one, then my light is maybe a two or three. And that'll really give you a painting with strong sun and shadow. So now I've added a little more yellow to the same color. And within these lighter shapes, I'm just making it look a little warmer. Just kind of makes it look sunny and pretty. Okay, so that's good for that for now. I'm gonna go over here on the left and put a little bit of bright green here. Now this green has a lot of bright hues of green showing because it's in front of the trunk. Now for the greens on this side of the tree, they have a lot of yellow in them also. So I'm gonna use the same mixture, but I'm adding more yellow to it. And I'm simplifying what's there. And so I'm not trying to draw, you know, three trees or bushes or anything like that. Again, it's just beautiful shapes, kind of like what we did in the background, but because these are closer, of course they're gonna have more blue and yellow and less red. And there's these greens pass through to the other side of the cypress tree. So I'm just gonna put that in. It's on the very left side of the, the canvas or the paper. So I'm just making it a really simple shape. Not really defining anything about what it is except that it's just green. And I'm painting around this, which is a like a stone pillar. And in the photograph, this is a paver, but I'm just making it green. I want the pavers to end here because I feel like if I had a big light space that was white on this side, it would take away from the painting. At the end of the day, it's not about painting what's in the photo or making things exactly like what's in the photo. It's about making your painting work. So you have to take inspiration from the photo and cues, but you don't want to imitate what's there exactly. You want to make a beautiful painting. If you were going to imitate what's there exactly, you could just take a picture. So I'm putting a few more light highlights here. Same for behind the tree. So there's a few beautiful light greens down at the bottom here. And I'm gonna add some bright lemon yellow to that. For some reason with gouache, you can make the colors brighter than you would with a normal painting, like with an oil painting, and it looks great. So I do tend to brighten colors when I paint with gouache more than with other mediums, certainly more than with oils. I think it's part of what makes them look so contemporary. So now we're ready to move on to um, painting the path and these flowers, and then we'll move on to these flowers and the pavers. But, but for now, we're finished mixing greens. So to paint the path, um, we're gonna make a beautiful salmon color with um, magenta and vermilion and Naples yellow. And we'll paint that first, and then we'll paint the shadow color over it. I want it to be really light, so I'm mixing lots of Naples with vermilion and magenta. 
and very little water. So here we go. The pink path is such a nice contrast to the green. Where the grass is in the sun, that's gonna meet up with where the pathway's in the sun. Now in the photo, it looks lighter than what I'm painting. And I will go back and add some highlights in a little while. But remember that photos make the lights lighter and the darks darker. So you can compensate for that by adding more color and darkening hues slightly or lightening them slightly. I'm gonna mix some more Naples yellow and go into the center of this one. This, this beautiful horizontal path of sunlight. And I'm just gonna make a few more marks of dappled sunlight. When you're working on an area like this, sometimes you might wanna mix up um, the sunlight color in one section of your mixing space and the shadow color in the others because you may wanna go back and forth a bit. Okay, I'm gonna rinse my brush and I'm gonna mix up the shadow color with ultramarine and magenta and vermilion. So more vermilion and more ultramarine. And I'm going to put a little titanium white too. And I'm going to pull that shadow color right across here. So I'm not planning to put any of the detail of the bricks because I don't think it's necessary for the scale of this and I don't think it will add to the composition. So just the, the colors and the patterns of the shadow and the light I think are enough for me. But I will have details in the papers in the foreground. So now I'm gonna mix some more ultramarine and white. And I'm gonna go into the shadow and just make a few color details. But I'm not putting any lines for bricks. So make sure that these shadow lines meet up with the shadow of the green that we painted on the grass. So I'm gonna make sure I'm gonna bring it right over to that green line of shadow. And wherever the green shadow meets the bricks, it's gonna meet with the dark purple shadow color. And where it meets with the sunlight, it's gonna be the salmon color. So you've got this beautiful shadow shape moving across the path and meeting up with the same shape but in a different color in the sun. And it just makes a beautiful pattern. It makes the pathway so inviting. You could just sort of take a visual stroll down this path, wandering in and out of the light and shadow in and out of the shade and the sun and the heat. I added a little more titanium white and blue. Just wanna make a few more color details here. If you look in the photograph again, you can see that there's some reflected light or something causing a, a beautiful glowing blue color in the middle of these shadow shapes. So I want to have them have that extra color detail because I think it's so beautiful. I'm 
Now I'm gonna add the purple flowers that are spilling over. So um, the difference between the color purple of the purple flowers and the color purple in the shadow is that the flowers are more pink. So purple goes in two directions on the color wheel. In one direction it goes towards pinkish purple and the other direction towards bluish purple. So if you have two purples next to each other, you'd wanna make one more pink and one more blue. Or you could just change the color of the flowers all together. You could make them red or yellow or something like that. But I kind of like these pink flowers, this, this lavender color, so I'm keeping them. So right now I'm putting them down as just one, one value shade of this pink, but I'm gonna go back over them and give them some dimension with some lighter and cooler and then some warmer and darker colors. But I think this is a beautiful color of pink here. And it also is gonna look pretty because this pink and these flowers is gonna be more of a reddish pink and they'll really come forward and will all look harmonious and beautiful. Okay, so now I'm gonna mix some white in and I'm gonna make some of these lighter, especially where they're in the sunlight. Because there's sun and shadow on almost everything in this whole scene. So we get to just play with that and mix all these beautiful colors. So you see how the sun hitting the flowers matches up with where it meets the sun and the, the salmon color in the bricks. That's a really nice touch. I'm gonna bring a few of those flowers out into the greenery. And I'll bring a few spots of green into where the flowers are also. So now even more white. I'm gonna put that back in the very back, an even lighter color. There, so now we've got some really nice variety of, of values in our, in our flowers. I'm gonna put um, a few pretty green leaves. So I'm using lemon and turquoise. And I wanna have some really bright greens mixed in among these pretty red flowers. And I'm also gonna add some blue. It's gonna be green, but it's gonna be a very bluish green in here as well. If you look at the picture, you can really see the blue shimmer in some of those leaves. I can't remember if these are called geraniums or begonias, but they have this shimmery leaves. And that's what makes them appear blue. Okay, so here's ultramarine and titanium white. Now we're gonna put some of that in here also, pretty blue green. So our painting is gonna be really well balanced with cools cool greens, blue greens, and warm yellow greens. So I'm not finished with the flowers yet, but I have a good, good amount of color blocked in and I'm gonna add more to them later. I'm gonna paint the pot. So I'm gonna go right for this mixture with vermilion and pink, but I'm gonna add 
deep yellow to it, and some Naples yellow. And we'll make this nice terracotta color. And I'm also gonna add some black intenso. So the pot has light and shadow, so that's like a nice mid color added there. So I'm gonna add black intenso, ultramarine, and magenta. And I'm gonna darken this side where it goes into the shadow side. And I'm gonna put a dark line along the base of it And now I'm gonna add some vermilion to this color and put in some of the cast shadow across the pot. Rinsing my brush again. Now I'm gonna get Naples yellow and mix it in with that. And I'm gonna put some of this pretty pattern of sun hitting the pot. So we even have light and shadow on something as small as the flower pot. It's just very pretty. I wanna start working on the pavers. So I'm gonna mix titanium white and Naples yellow. And basically, I'm gonna put down a tone here in the front. I'm gonna add some magenta also. I'm gonna put down a tone over the whole area then I'm going to come back in and paint the shadow colors over it. So I'm just putting this nice color of white plus a lot of Naples and a small amount of magenta. and painting the whole area of the pavers in the front right up to the edge of this pot. And then I'll put in the shadow color on top of this. And this is almost the same approach I would use if I were painting in oils. but because it's gouache, it's a bit trans more transparent than oil. Oh, I see I missed a spot here when I was painting the salmon color for the brick, so I'm gonna just fix that right now. There we are. So while that's drying, I'm also gonna paint this stone pillar behind the tree back to Naples yellow. And I'm gonna add some ultramarine to that. I've just made a very nice light three color gray. I'm just gonna paint in the shape back here. And now I'm going to mix ultramarine blue and magenta and a bit of black intenso. And I'm going to put the shadow in for this stone pillar. 
just a tiny bit of this shadow just to give it a little bit of detail. I'm going to um, mix up a color for the tree trunk. I'm going to use magenta and mix that in with the black and some vermilion. So I'm going to start with a pretty dark color and then I'll put some lighter highlights over it. This tree has such character in this tree trunk. It's just gorgeous. I wondered how old it was when I saw it. So these beautiful branches come up and they curve around. And there's a few beautiful small ones kind of poking through the sky holes. So where this tree comes right up to the shadow color that it's casting, I'm gonna go right up against the, the sidewalk. And I'm gonna go around the base here with this nice dark color. And now I'm gonna go back and get Vermilion and Naples Yellow. And I'm gonna put that nice rich brown color along the base of the tree trunk and I'm going to pull I'm going to put some titanium white in also I'm going to pull some of this pretty um, color up into the tree trunk so I also just added a bit of deep yellow and titanium white to lighten it and warm it just slightly more and remember I made this tree thinner than how it looks in the photo so this is not exact, but what I want to do is paint some expressive brush strokes that capture the character of its twisty branches and trunk. And just kind of taking some inspiration, some cues for light and shadow from the photo. And also thinking of some of the bark texture so I'm making some thinner marks here. And get a nice strong tree. I'm gonna go back to the black now. This is a good time when you're at this stage of your painting to squint down a bit and make sure your design is still working. Make sure you're, you've got a good balance of light and dark. See if you're getting stuck anywhere and so on. And, and so I definitely want to have some nice texture in the trunk here. And that's why I'm going back over it with this dark. And I can tell too, I'm going to have to go back over it with some more greens to fill in a few more of these spaces with green. But I want to get this trunk mostly in. There. I'm also going to add some ultramarine blue and put a bit of this blue violet kind of towards the bottom just because I see some of it in the photo. And adding that cooler light 
gives the tree a little more dimension. Remember, temperature shifts create dimension. I'm gonna mix some ultramarine blue and titanium white. And let's start painting the beautiful shadow patterns in the foreground. Now I've mixed titanium or the white and the ultramarine blue and magenta. And I'm also going to gray it with just a little bit of deep yellow. It's like a nice three color gray. And we'll start right here. And I am gonna put in the patterns of the pavers, but first I'm gonna put the shadow color in. So you can be pretty expressive and painterly with this, but basically it's the same philosophy as the shadow patterns on the sidewalk. You want them to match the other things around them. So where this, this bush is in shadow here, I want the shadow color to come up and meet the edges of that. And we will have some edge work to do where we'll, we'll want to put some of the bush, the leaves of the bush coming over the shadow color, but I want to get that, that value in there first. So a lot of times in the foreground, you have opportunities to be really expressive with your brush strokes. You can create movement, plus you can just make your painting painterly and a little more interesting. And things like shadows give you the freedom to, you know, just kind of express their movement and shapes and things. And it's almost like making a little abstract section of your painting. I tend to do that when I'm working with skies, parking lots, you know, cement, green grass, and so on. Now, I'm gonna go back and put in a couple of, of holes of sunlight here. I covered up a little too much. So Naples yellow, titanium white, and I'll put a small amount of vermilion. I know last time I used magenta, but I'm gonna use vermilion this time. And in the same way that I put in the shadow with big loose brush strokes, I'm putting in a couple of spots of sun with just big loose brush strokes here also. So while this is, is drying, I'm gonna to have to come back into it in a little bit and, and add a couple more layers. But while it's drying, um, I wanna go add some finishing touches to other parts of the painting. So I'm gonna to start to fill these in with some nice green shapes. So I'm gonna use turquoise green and lemon and some ultramarine and white. And I'll get some regular yellow also. And a little bit of vermilion, it's a bit bright. And I'm gonna just pop in some more beautiful shapes of green. And I've made this a bit more bluish, this green, just because I've got a lot of yellow green here and I wanna have some more variety. 
And then back here, I want this to be lighter and more yellow, so I'm going to get some Naples and lemon yellow. And then we've got most of our paper covered now. We've got a really nice variety of greens, but we need to finish up this foreground. So I want to um, re-emphasize the darks in here and here, and then I want to brighten the flowers a bit. So we'll do the darks first. I'm going to use Black Intenso, Ultramarine Blue, and Magenta. I love to mix Magenta with Black for gouache. I'm going to just emphasize some of these nice lines. So right under the bush here, we'll have some little dark marks. Just emphasizing that dark and bringing it forward. And along here also. And we'll have a, a nice line here kind of separating this, the foreground pavers from the bricks. And a nice dark line emphasizing the base of this flower pot. And a few darks within the flowers. I'm just putting in some of these really nice lines for the pavers. We're not going to put in all of them, but definitely some to give some texture to the foreground. Show some of the beautiful patterns. Now, I know that these look really dark right now, but we're going to be going over them later with some other colors. But for right now, I'm putting them in pretty dark. So in some places where there's a spot of sunlight, I'm skipping, I'm letting the line skip. And in other places, I'm going ahead and drawing it in. There we are. Now what I want to do is add some red and yellow into some of the lines between the pavers. So I mix vermilion and 
deep yellow. And I'm painting right over the black. But I'm leaving some of the black showing. So what this does is it gives the, the lines some, some color so it's not just straight black. And the rich brown color is a nice complement to the blue violets. So why not just paint the brown first? Why bother to paint the black? It just looks better. It looks better to paint it this way. I've done this enough times I can just say that. But um, but I was just thinking that probably you're, some of you are wondering why not just paint the brown? Why bother to put the black in first? And it just, because it just looks better. Now I'm gonna put a few green leaves right in here, hanging over the shadow color. So deep yellow, turquoise, and a little bit of black intenso. And we'll put a few leaves popping over the shadow color. Still very dark. And I'm also gonna add some dark green back here behind this post. Just to give it, just to give it some definition. We don't have to explain too much about it visually, but it needs a bit of definition. Now I'm gonna use the same color and I added a little more dark to it. And I'm going to go in here and add a few details just to show that you know these these plants and things go back from the foreground in rounded shapes and so to create that look I need to add some darks in between the lights I'm rinsing my brush so I can get a little bit less pigment And I'll have a little bit of dark green in between some of these clusters of flowers. Just makes them look more realistic. So whenever anything is in the sun, you need to have shadow too. The shadow color makes the sunlight look brighter and vice versa. I didn't mean to put that warm dark right there. That's the tree, so I'm putting some blue back into it. There we are. Now I wanna brighten up these flowers some more. So I'm gonna use titanium white and a very small amount of magenta. And I'm just gonna put some nice pops of bright, very, very light pink. It's more like tinted white than it is like pink. And I'm also gonna add some lemon yellow to it it's too cool, that's better.
I'm gonna take some of the same light color and add a little more titanium white to it and put a few more white highlights in the back where these flowers are lighter, the ones that are spilling over the path. So beautiful. Now I'm going to add a very small amount of lemon to that same color and more white. And I'm gonna put some brighter spots into the foreground. Remember, I love the look of layers and gouache. Now I'm also going to put some of this white into the corners of where some of these dark lines are. Because if you look at the photo, you can see that the light makes its way into some of the cracks. It's a really nice little detail you can add. And I'm going to add a few highlights back here. With that same color. And now I'm going to add some deep yellow. I'm going to warm up the edges of some of these highlights. So you see I've layered lighter whites, pinker lights, or lighter colors with hints of pink. And now I'm putting a bit of yellow in. I'm going to add a couple of brighter greens um, and lighter highlights also to the cypress tree right here in the foreground. I've got some, but I'm just going to add a few more. So I mixed white yellow, and ultramarine blue. Just want to emphasize that strong vertical in the foreground. It does take a lot of layering sometimes to get the trees to look the way you want them. And I'm going to highlight this here. Give that a little more dimension. Now I'll get some lemon yellow. And I'm going to put a couple pops of lemon yellow in the foreground of the plants next to the path. Just to really emphasize that sun coming around the tree. I'm going to put it all the way up here. Yeah, that's good. And a little bit back here. Lemon yellow is a great color to really get things to glow. And I'm gonna put a bit of it right at the edge here where the path meets the sun, where the grass is in the sun. 
just to make that look a little warmer and sunnier. You see how I don't blend too much? I sort of just put a brush stroke down and let it be. And you can really see your brush strokes with gouache. That's one of the things that makes it different from watercolor, for instance. You can really see the brush strokes. Watercolor is more about the colors blending with each other. I'm going to put a couple of sunny highlights of green coming through the tree at the top. Just a couple. Looks a bit heavy and dark to me. So this is how I finish paintings. I just kind of assess. I look for where do I need to add some lights? Where do I need to add some darks and so on? And I just keep making small adjustments until I'm really, really happy with my painting. I'm going to add some bit of yellow to the tree right here. I'm also going to add a couple of highlights on the tree trunk. So I'm mixing magenta and white and a small amount of deep yellow. I don't have a whole lot of pigment on my brush and I don't have much water either. I just want to Oh, that's too light. I just want to lightly brush over just to give it a few extra brush strokes of texture because to me, it looks a bit flat. I've zoomed in a bit. I decided I'm still going to lighten and soften the edges of a couple of these lines. So I've got a mixture of white and vermilion and also some blue. It's basically a bit of a gray and I just want to soften them a little bit. To me, they're a little too strong and, and what's happening is they're distracting from the rest of the painting. And I want to have the detail here, but I don't want them to take away from the painting. And these are the sort of little finishing touches that do take a lot of patience, but at the end of the day, you have a painting you're really happy with. Yeah, that's better. Thank you so much again for joining me.